What's up, everybody? I am James Riley, author of a number of book series, including Revenge of Magic, which I'm going to be reading to you today. I've gotten a bunch of questions from teachers and librarians uh, asking if they could read out loud online from my books because they had been reading to classes, uh, and that's totally okay. But I also thought that in case anyone didn't ask or in case kids wanted to hear these books read, uh, just for fun, I would start reading from them. So I'm doing a chapter each day from each of my three series, and now we're finally to Revenge of Magic, the series I'm still writing right now because it's ongoing. I'm, all, I'm writing the fifth book as we speak. So uh, I won't tell you too much about what Revenge of Magic is because you're going to hear about it, um, but it's my newest series. It's going to be uh, around five books long. It was going to be seven, but the plot has sort of sped up because bad things are happening. Uh, and I'm going to give you some commentary as I go, probably not in chapter one because I don't want to ruin too much. But as we get further in and meet new characters, I'm going to tell you kind of some of my thoughts behind them. So if just in case you've read it already, you'll still learn something, maybe, but in a fun way. So this is Revenge of Magic, chapter one. Revenge of Magic by James Riley. I don't know who that is. Chapter 1. Just minutes before the attack in Washington, D.C., Fort's father was embarrassing him at the Lincoln Memorial. President Forsyth Fitzgerald, his dad said, pointing at the spot each word would go above the giant seated statue of Abraham Lincoln. I feel like we're going to need a larger statue, though. These ceilings are high enough to fit that head of yours, but you're definitely going to need a bigger chair. Fort rolled his eyes, but a grin popped out anyway. I'm pretty sure they don't let 12-year-olds run for president, he said. I think I have to be an adult. And that's when you said I was going to be leading a mission to Jupiter. And curing cancer, I think. The version of me in your head really needs to make up his mind. You'll do all of that and more, his father shouted. Other visitors to the Lincoln Memorial began to look at them, making Fort blush. There's no time to be lazy, not with all the amazing things you're going to accomplish. And don't forget that I still want a flying car, so I'll need you to invent that too. Fort tried to pull his father to a less crowded area, but his dad wouldn't move. I will if you just talk less loudly, he murmured as two girls slightly older than Fort stared at them, whispering. Fantastic. Uh, I'm pretty sure as an adult I can talk as loudly as I want, his father said. But stop pushing us off topic, Fort. This is your future we're talking about. You're going to be a great man someday, and I, for one, can't wait to take pictures in front of your statue as children gaze up at it adoringly. He waved at the two girls. See? We've already got two volunteers. His father is enjoying embarrassing him. The girls both broke into wide smiles, and Fort felt his face burn with the heat of a, vol of a volcano. I'm sorry about this, he told them. He thinks it's funny to embarrass me whenever he can. It's not not funny, one of the girls said. Intelligent youths around here, his father shouted in response. Listen to them, Fort. I hear that children are our future. I'm your future, Fort hissed at them, because once you're old, I get to decide which nursing home to put you in. Low blow, young man, his dad said, then pointed at Lincoln. Do you think our beloved 16th president would have spoken to his father that way? And he's your personal hero. He leaned closer to the girls conspiratorially. When my boy here was in diapers, he'd stroll around in a top hat and make us all call him Fort Lincoln. One of the girls snorted, while the other turned away to hide her laughter. Fort wondered how easy it'd be to spontaneously combust. He's making that up, he told the girls, his face getting even hotter, and we really need to be going. Oh, we have plenty of time, his father said, taking out his phone. Besides, I think I have pictures of that in here. Girls, you want to see? I'm just getting really tired, Ford said, yanking his father by his arm toward the steps of the memorial. Maybe we should head back to the hotel. Nonsense, Ford's father shouted. Why, we haven't even seen Einstein yet. Did you know there's a statue of Einstein right off the National Mall, Fort? There actually is. It's kind of fun. And the Gettysburg Address? He pointed at the speech carved into the wall of the Lincoln Memorial to the left of the president. Look at this. 272 words, short and to the point. Much shorter than this book, actually. A slight tremble shook the memorial, like a heavy truck was driving by. Fort looked around nervously, but the tremor only lasted a few seconds, and no one else really seemed bothered by it. I think President Lincoln is waking up, his father whispered to him with a grin. Did you know a second man gave a two-hour speech before Lincoln at Gettysburg? Also true. He handed Fort a brochure with the Gettysburg Address written out in multiple languages. I don't see that speech carved in marble, do you? If that's not proof that shorter is better, I don't... A second tremor hit, this one more violent. Several people shouted in surprise around the memorial, and Fort almost lost his balance, barely avoiding dropping to his knee on the marble. He looked up at his father in alarm. Was this an earthquake? What was happening? His father reached over to steady Fort as the trembling, trembling stopped again. Ladies, maybe you should go find your parents, he said to the two girls they'd been talking to, then turned to Fort. You okay, kiddo? Totally fine, Fort said, pretending his heart wasn't still racing. It, it was nothing. That's the spirit, his father said, though he looked a bit shaken too. But maybe we should head back to the hotel and grab some dinner. Einstein can wait. After all, time is his relative, I think. Probably a cousin. Fort couldn't even bring himself to roll his eyes. 
Instead, he shoved the Gettysburg Address brochure in his pocket and started to make his way through the now unsettled crowd towards the stairs. As he reached the top of the steps, something strange caught his eye in the distance. The Lincoln Memorial was surrounded by a circle of roadway, with a reflecting pool stretching out from the memorial to the Washington Monument almost a mile away. But even from that distance, Fort could see lines of people quickly leaving the monument in every direction. That wasn't a great sign. But the strangest thing about it was that as far as Fort could tell, even from this distance, all the tourists were running from the monument in single file lines, each person moving at the exact same speed. Dad, did you see that? Fort asked, turning around just as a third tremor stuck, tr struck, this time much worse than the last two. The stone of the memorial lift, leaped straight up, throwing Fort a foot in the air. He landed hard as the stone cracked beneath him in a jagged lightning shape all the way down the steps. Out! Fort's father shouted, pushing the girls toward the exit, before grabbing Fort's hand and yanking him down the stairs. They made it down to the street, circling the memorial, with horrifying noises coming from behind them. The shaking grew more intense, and now people by the reflecting pool were running off, again in single file, one behind the other, not even looking as they crossed the street. Fortunately, the cars had all stopped, and the passengers had exited their vehicles, merging smoothly into the lines of fleeing tourists. As odd as all of that was, even stranger was that no one was screaming in fear, or yelling for a friend, or even saying a word. Instead, they were all deathly quiet, moving in unison like some sort of flash mob they'd been choreographing for months. The sheer silence of those fleeing sent a chill down Fort's spine. A horrible new cracking noise erupted across the reflecting pool, like rock scraping against rock, and Fort's father shouted something, but the grinding noise overpowered his words. Fort turned to find people near him pointing at the Washington Monument, and they were all screaming. That at least felt more normal to Fort than the eerie sil silence closer to the monument and reflecting pool. Look out, someone shouted as a car came speeding around the circle right toward a large group of tourists. One of the two girls from above had just stepped in the path of the car, but the other yanked her out of the way as the car roared past. Off the road, his father shouted, and pushed both Fort and the girls onto the lawn to the side of the crumbling Lincoln Memorial. We have to get out of here. My mom's still in there, one of the girls shouted. I need to go find her. I'm coming, the other girl started to say, then abruptly stopped, turned, and ran off toward the side streets. Megan, the first girl called after her, where are you going? Fort's father looked back up into the Lincoln Memorial, then down at Fort. Wait here, he said. Don't move until I get back. I'm going to go find their mom. His father took the crack steps, two by two, pushing up against the crowd like he was swimming up a waterfall. Fort waited for a moment, then ran after him, followed by the remaining girl. Look, someone shouted behind him. It can't be real, someone else said, filming with their phone. Fort threw a look over his shoulder for a moment, then froze in place halfway up the steps. Next to the Washington Monument, something was pushing up out of the ground. Something that looked like claws. Claws that were ten feet tall. Hey, it's the cover! So you're going to find out what that creature is as you go. Not going to spoil it. Um, but things aren't really looking that great right now. Uh, I want to tell you all about this series because I love it and it's really fun. Uh, without spoiling anything, this is my version of a school for magic. And you're going to find out who this creature is, where magic came from, all that kind of stuff. If you keep listening or if you read it yourself. So I hope you've liked this uh, and check back in a few days and I will read chapter two if you're interested. Thank you very much.